Once you've completed a system design in EasyPV, you'll be navigated to the project overview page where you can see your entire kit list for what you've just designed, the project details over on the left, and then the task list over on the right. From here, we can continue through these tasks to generate some estimates for the performance of the system, what the customer is expected to consume, some structural calculations based on the roof structure, generate a schematic diagram, and also generate a full financial payback and a customized quote for your customer. The first of these tasks is the performance task. The performance task uses MCS guideline calculations to give us an estimate on what the array is going to produce throughout the average year. And then will let us enter a bit more information about the property and the homeowner to get an estimate for how much the customer is actually going to consume from what is being produced. There are a few factors involved in the calculation one of which is any shading that might be present on the array. EasyPV will let us add this shading in, but first we need to allocate our panels to their strings, of which we have two strings of six. I'm going to put one string of six on the left-hand side of this array and one string on the right. Next, we will come to an aerial view of the property again, where you can set the address if not done already. Next, it will allow us to change the pitch and orientation if necessary, although these should be added in already. And then it will bring us to this page here where we can see a sun path diagram that will allow us to add some shading to our system. If you are not familiar with one of these diagrams, I'd strongly recommend reviewing the MCS guideline documentation to understand what these diagrams represent and how to add shading to your system. As a brief introduction, the sun path diagram represents the path of the sun throughout the times of the day, with it rising in the east in the morning, being in the south of the horizon in the middle of the day, and then setting in the west in the evening. The different bands represent the height of the sun in the horizon throughout the different times of the year, with the lower bands representing when the sun is at its lowest during winter, and the top bands representing the sun being at its highest in the summer. To add any shading that is present on the array, you can click with your mouse to add it in the relevant area, or you can double click which will add the circular radius of shading factor as per the recommended method laid out in the MCS guidelines. You can use the reset button to clear any mistakes you might have made and then move on once this is complete. EasyPV will then generate this table here using the MCS guideline calculations to give us an estimate on the total annual output of the array which we can see at the bottom here. From here, we can add our MCS self-consumption calculation, which will actually let us enter a little bit more information about the homeowner and the property to give us an estimate on what the customer is actually going to consume. First, we need to enter the annual electricity usage of the property. We're then going to choose what the customer is going to be using their batteries for. So are the batteries going to be used for self-consumption or are they planning to sell power back into the grid for export payments or actually charge from the grid? We're going to choose an occupancy archetype for the homeowner. So are they going to be in all day, out all day, or maybe a little bit of both? And then we can also outline an estimate for any power that's going to be driven towards EV chargers, electric water heaters, etc. And then we can see that two extra sections have been added to the table. Section C gives us an estimated consumption value based on if we were to just install the solar panels only, which you can see is about 640 kilowatt hours out of that 4,200 that's being generated for a homeowner that's gonna be out all day. And then section D compares that value with once we've added our, in this case, 10 kilowatt hours of battery storage. And you can see how that's had quite a significant impact on that consumption estimate, which as you can see, should result in a reduction of their dependency on the grid by an estimated 72%. Now EasyPV can use this consumption estimate later on in the financial section in addition to the tariff rate that the customer is actually paying for their electricity to give us an estimate on what they're expected to save per year. Now if your estimated total annual output goes above 6,000 kilowatt hours per year then unfortunately the MCS guideline calculations are not applicable to systems of that size and you'll be unable to generate a consumption value from this task. And so in that case, we have actually added our own method of calculating a consumption estimate in the following task labeled consumption.
The consumption task uses slightly different methods to obtain a similar estimate for what the customer is expected to consume from the array. And coming into this task, all we need to do is enter the annual electricity usage of the property again, click confirm, and EasyPV will actually use information that was collected from a study that was done into an average UK home with a solar array on it. And it will compare the results of that array to the system that we've designed to calculate its own version of that consumption value in the scenario that you were unable to use the MCS method. When you come to complete the financial task, if you have completed both of these tasks and you were able to generate a consumption estimate from the MCS method, you'll be given the choice between the two. Now in this situation, we would recommend the MCS self-consumption option as it is slightly more specific to the customer and the property that you're working with and it's always best to stick to the guideline calculations where possible.